Amazon product listings. We're talking in this video all about how to optimize your Amazon product listing in 2019 to make you more money and we're doing it right now. Welcome to another video guys. My name is Ben from bendonovan.co.uk and uh, I'm here to really help you build a business that's gonna free you up to live the life of your dreams. And so uh, I've got this desire to help as many people as possible to have financial freedom that frees them up from the grip that money places over our time and so we can make a difference in the world we live in. And so if, if that's you, you can make a start by hitting that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a thing. All right, so today we're talking about optimization. Well, why optimize? Why do I need to optimize my product listing on Amazon? Well, the term optimization simply means this, the action of making the best or most effective use of a situation or resource, or the act of rendering optimal. So in other words, you can be selling a product on Amazon, but you can have an ineffective listing. You can have a sub-optimal listing, or in other words, you could be making more money. So optimization is key, but so many people settle for good when they could have great. I'm a major fan of the Jim Collins book, Good to Great, where he talks about businesses going from good to great. And it's so true with our Amazon listings too, is so often we settle for good for six, seven, eight sales a day when we could have great, which is many, many more. And so in this video today, I'm gonna go through some goals of optimization and how you might breach those goals. I've got something a little bit different for you today. We're gonna to jump onto the whiteboard, so let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome to the whiteboard. I'm just trying this today in the hope that it might help a few more people. If it does help you, make sure you do hit the like button below just so I do know it does help for future reference. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, quickly, a first look, when we're talking about optimization, a uh, look at some of the maths, right? What, what we're trying to do when we're optimizing our Amazon listing, of course, ultimately, is to make more sales so that we can make more revenue and we can make more profit and live the life that we truly desire. And so in order to understand this a bit more, if we understand the maths, it really helps us know why optimization is so important. Let's say for instance, you are getting 100 views of your product every single day. Your Amazon product listing is getting 100 people look at it, which in the UK and Europe is totally feasible if you've got a good product and it's in a market with a relatively decent demand. Uh, so let's just say that just for the ease of my maths, you've got 100 people looking at your product every single day. And say, for instance, at the moment that your conversion rate is 8%, 8% of people. For every 100 people that look at your listing, 8% of people buy it, which again is, um, I'd say it's relatively low for what I'd be looking at. I'd be wanting to be looking at higher, but that's maybe is about average on Amazon, okay? And so we're looking at 8% as a conversion rate right now, but say we were to optimize our listing and just squeeze an extra 2% percent out of our listing meaning we had a conversion rate of 10 percent on our product for every 100 people 10 people would purchase our product uh, that actually makes a significant difference in our revenue for instance if you're selling a product that is 20 pounds 20 pounds or 20 euros, $20, 20 pounds for your product, you're selling it for that much. Say for instance that you are working on a 30% profit margin, which is again, reasonable after all expenses, you know, PPC, fulfillment fees, referral fees, all your expenses, your product cost fees. Say you're looking at a six pounds profit for every 20 pounds sale you make, which at the end of the day, I personally would be happy with. That's kind of how I run in my business. And uh, you know, you go ask Tesco, Sainsbury's, any of those guys, what their margins are, and they would be, certainly happy with a 30% profit margin on every product they sold. And so what we're looking at here is say for instance, six pounds for every product that we sell. And so what this difference makes for us, this 2% when we optimize, it actually does make a significant difference in our business. So say for instance there, we, we've gone from selling eight units a day to selling 10 units a day, which is two units every single day, which times by 365, I feel like I'm on countdown right now, times by 365 is 730. 730 units extra per year that you are selling because you've optimized your listing just a small amount to get it from 8% to 
10%. So you see what a dramatic difference this can make in numerical figures. Let me just work this out for you. 730 times six is gonna be somewhere over 4,000 pounds. That's just in my head. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's somewhere over 4,000 pounds just because you optimized your listing. So guys, this is so important. This video alone could urge you earn you thousands of pounds more every single year in your Amazon business. So if this is gonna help, make sure you do hit that like button below so more and more people can earn thousands more every single year and live the life they dream. All right, but how do we optimize? Let's jump into three clear optimization goals when we're looking to optimize our listing. Okay, three clear goals. Make sure you do stick around for the third one because the third one I'm gonna drop some really like pro level, really in-depth training that's gonna really, really help you. But but goal number one, goal number one of our optimization activity is impressions, all right? Impressions. We wanna get as many people looking at our product as possible. Impressions is all about the amount of eyeballs on our product. Who's looking at our product and how many times every single day? This is the first thing we need to consider when we're considering optimizing our listing. And, and so then how do we get impressions? How do we optimize for impressions? Well, that my friend is all about key words. Apologize for my terrible handwriting. Hope it makes sense but I'm sure you can forgive me, right? Um, our keywords is, is what we need to think about when we're optimizing for impressions. And now what are keywords? Uh, you might hear the term search terms and keywords often when talking about customers intent on Amazon. Search terms are the terms that the customer is actually typing into the search bar. Whereas keywords are what we are saying to Amazon that we want to be shown for these words when the customer is searching. So keywords are what we control, search terms is what the customer controls, okay? So when we're looking at keywords, what we need to do when we're optimizing our listing is find keywords that fit two boxes. Number one, they are relevant to our product and number two, they have traffic running through them. We, we want to use keywords in our listing that have enough traffic to justify them being in our listing, right? Because we've only got so much space in our listing, in our title, in our bullet points and our description. We need to make sure that we use that space well and we use it and we optimize that space for high traffic keywords that are relevant to our product. And so how do we find this? Well, relevancy, of course, that is down to product research. That is down to digging deep into the product that we have and understanding the customer and what they're looking to buy in our product. And that is that happens in the product research stage and the market research stage. And then how do we get keywords that have good traffic, good amounts of volume coming through them? Well, there's a few ways you can do about do that. You can actually go to Amazon and you can look in the search bar and you can begin to type the product that you have. For instance, yoga mat and you might type that in the search bar and uh, all of a sudden Amazon is going to suggest to you a whole bunch of new keywords. They're going to be longer tail keywords, they're going to be uh, variations on what you've already typed in there and that will actually show you what are the most high volume keywords in that list because Amazon ranks them in order of search volume. How popular are these uh, search terms that the customer is searching for? And so by doing that and trying a different, uh, a few different combinations of what you're typing in there, you might put in there uh, mat for yoga and then see what comes up there. You might put in um, yoga accessories and see what comes up there. And uh, you know you can begin to get an idea of what is the highest volume keywords. So what you can also do is you can use a tool, for instance, something like Helium 10, which I am a big fan of, a big proponent of, and an affiliate for, because it is the best product out there, I believe, for building great listings, for doing product research, being an all-in-one product solution. And, and what you can do with Helium 10 is you can actually type your source keyword into their magnet tool, which is a keyword research tool. And what it will do is it will give you hundreds, if not thousands, of keyword suggestions for your product and it will give you the ability to display them in a certain order for instance by search volume by how many products are competing against that keyword and so many other things it's a really really useful tool um, at the back end of last year Amazon actually plugged the gap in the, um, the algorithm where they were actually releasing the data for accurate search volume for different keywords in the Amazon system and so uh, helium 10 magnet was one of the very first tools that actually had access to this data and, uh, and whilst 
now Amazon has stopped giving this data out to any tool across the board. Um, whilst that is disappointing because we can't see those numbers, Helium 10 actually is at the, the forefront of the industry. And, uh, and what they do is actually they've uh, you know taken 15 months worth of data and still given us the you know the most accurate estimations on that data. So, so whilst it isn't now entirely from the mouth of Amazon, so to speak, it is still super helpful, super reliable data that we can plan our keyword structure and optimize our listing around. So remember, if we want to optimize for impressions and get eyeballs on our product, what we need to do is find the right keywords. Find your list of keywords, continually optimize your keywords, because remember, optimization is not a one-time event, but it's a continual process. It is find the keywords that are both relevant to your product and also have a lot of traffic coming through them. All right, so that is goal number one when it comes to optimizing, and that is for impressions. Okay, so we've got impressions on our product. People are actually seeing our product. So now what do we need to optimize our listing in light of? What's the second goal for optimizing our listing? And the second goal, goal number two, is for clicks. Uh, it's not enough to get impressions. It's not enough just for people to see our product. Uh, we need to get people to click through into our product listing. There's no point having a product listing if no one goes in and see it. People can't buy your product unless they go into your product listing. So what you need to do is once you've optimized for impressions, you actually then need to consider click so how do i get people to click on my listing now they've seen it in the amazon search results and so when it comes to attracting clicks three things you can do to attract more clicks and optimize for more clicks and, th and the first one is your photos and primarily or only for this one is your main image because obviously on the impression that's the only one they're going to see the main image that shows up in the product listings on Amazon. So when people are scrolling past your product, they are either gonna click through your product because they have seen your photo or they're gonna keep on scrolling. Your, your product photo, your main image, your hero image is one of the main ways that you can get people to click on your product. And so what does this photo need to be, this main image need to be? Well, of course it needs to be high quality. It needs to be a great quality photo, not blurry, not ambiguous, not hard to work at, make out what it is. It needs to be clear and obvious what your product is, but it also you want to try do everything you can to make this image pop you want to make this image stand out so what I would do whenever I'm launching a product into a new market or into a, a market we're already in and uh, you know I want to get to page one for a certain keyword every time I do that what I will do is I will search for the product say for instance yoga mat or uh, you know something like that I will search for that product and I will look through the page one results and I will go through that and I will look where can my image be different so for instance maybe all of the images on that first page are a certain color maybe my Mine can stand out by being a different color, a more vibrant color, or, or maybe my product is a unique in a way that I can actually be, do something creative with it to make it again stand out. Now, Amazon's terms of service are, um, you know, re relatively restrictive about what you can do with a main image. They say that you're not supposed to put text on it. You're not supposed to put uh, models on that main image or anything like that. What you're meant to do with that main image is literally just the product with a white background. But you can get creative with this. You, I mean, you can push the boundaries if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but you can get creative with this. You can, for instance, if you maybe have some colorful packaging or some high quality packaging, you can include that in the main image because that is part of your product. Um, what we would do with some of our products is actually spell things out. If there are a number of, of units in a box, uh, it's like a multi-pack or it's a certain size or weight or whatever it is that defines it. If you've maybe got small parts in your product you could maybe use some of those to spell something out for that main image just something different think what can I do differently with this main image that is going to cause people just to stop stop scrolling and take notice of your uh, listing because then that is going to attract a click which is the next stage of optimization all right so the, the first one that you can optimize for with clicks is your main photo the second thing to consider when optimizing your listing for clicks is your pricing your pricing, what are you pricing your product at? Because again, if someone's searching for a product, they're searching for their yoga mat, and someone's selling a yoga mat for 10 pounds, but you're selling it for 50 pounds, are they likely to click on your listing Probably not. And now, hear what I'm saying with this. What I'm not saying is be the cheapest product 
out there. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you've got to test. You've got to test your pricing to find what is the optimal price for your product and that will differ at different times of the year you may be able to charge more at peak times uh, you may have to discount at peak times to stay in the market you know it will differ through the year so that it's not just a set and forget thing again remember uh, optimization is a continual process but when it comes to pricing what we're saying here is test the pricing so you may want to try testing it a little bit lower you might want to test trying it uh, a little bit higher you know I've actually found several times that when I've increased the prices of various products the the sales haven't gone down and on occasions they've actually gone up. I had a product just recently that I had some issues with on the, the fulfillment fee because Amazon wrongly measured the unit and uh, they put the fulfillment price up and I was in a wrestle with them whether I could actually get this change back because they were adamant it was one thing, I was adamant it was another and there was this whole wrestle going on so I thought that the, the one pound kind of hit that I'd taken on that fulfillment fee, I'm going to add that onto my price and uh, you know just to help make up some of that lost ground there and see what happens and I actually began to sell more of this product it went from sort of seven or eight sales a day to like 12 or 13 every day and uh, and it was after I put the price up so not only were we doing more sales but we had a better profit margin once that fulfillment issue got sorted out which eventually it did so you know I may never have tried that if that issue hadn't have come up so that's these things like that that make me realize how much I need to continually optimize and test my pricing not just down but up up also or also test um, you know what's the best way to finish your pricing is it 99 is it 95 is it 97 is it 49 you test these things out there's no harm in testing you might find you might find believe it or not that people's psychology actually work towards one of these more and they're more likely to buy or click at least because of one of these different pricing endpoints so um, you know worth looking into the psychology of pricing studying that especially as you're in sales and uh, and having a look at that too so that's the second thing to consider when you're optimizing for clicks third consideration when optimizing for clicks of course is your reviews reviews number one how many do you have and number two what star rating do you have uh, I'm constantly banging this drum about the UK and EU opportunity right now because actually in most product markets when you establish yourself with 50 60 70 or more reviews you actually become one of the mainstays of that market because so many of the markets are open and so there's so much possibility in the UK and EU marketplaces that um, if you get a bunch of reviews then actually you can become a really solid listing in that marketplace and so it's really important that we do spend time working out how we can get more reviews at a higher star rating uh, you know I won't go super into depth to this because it's a whole other topic in itself but you know I've said it till I'm blue in the face but if you want to get good reviews create a good product uh, I mean that is the number one thing that, that a good product makes so many problems go away and it brings so many benefits to your business so number one if you you're a beginner on Amazon if you're just starting out make sure you do everything you can to source a good product but of course beyond that there are some ways that you can attract reviews too. a good email follow-up sequence that has subject lines that entice people to open the email that actually in engage with the people in the emails in my follow-up emails I'm always engaging with my customers hey I'd love it if you let me know if there's any reason why this was not a five-star product five star in the head already and, that, and it gets an engagement I ask people can you let me know if you got it that you know please let me know that you got your product safely I want to make sure that it got to you things like that that engage the customer in conversation then off the back of that you can um, mitigate any problems they might have had and I promise you good customer service will be the cause of so many good reviews in your business so make sure you really do think about how can I optimize my review gaining process to get more reviews at a higher star rating so that I can optimize for clicks all right third and final optimization goal is this guys number three it is for sales of course <laughs> this is what this has all been about there's no point us getting impressions if we don't get clicks but there's no point us getting clicks if we're not getting sales right so we need to get impressions we need to get clicks but most importantly of all of them we must get sales and so we must consider how we optimize our product listing for sales once they're on our product listing how do we then convert them uh, we talk in the sales industry about 
about conversions. That's how many people actually convert into from a, a viewer or a, a, a peruser into an actual customer, a potential customer into an actual customer. Uh, and that's what this is all about. And there's two real ways I want to talk about uh, quickly that you can optimize your listing for sales. The first one I won't talk about much because it's something in my other YouTube videos I've talked about a whole heap. You can actually, if you are a beginner, um, I recently did a full step-by-step -step guide of how to sell on Amazon for beginners. You can check that out up here and it will actually show you uh, exactly how to sell on Amazon and, and do things like create photos, images, and show you some comparisons and stuff like that. But, um, you know, aside from your main image, which will help you get your clicks, it's your sub images that will really help to convert to sales. And it's so important that you utilize all of these image spaces. It, it, Amazon are always changing, but at the moment it's nine total images. So you've got eight more of these images. Um, I think it's category dependent. All of my or our products, we can do eight in the sub images, but if you're in a, a unique category, it may be less or more, but most of them it's eight, right? And so you need to utilize all of these eight uh, sub images to really sell your product. A, a large proportion of people won't actually purchase by looking through text uh, alone, but they will look at the images as a major supplement to their buying decision, or, or it really is the major influence on their decision to buy. So it's so important that these eight images aren't just uh, any odd image that we throw up. You know, We don't just put our product uh, from six different angles in these images and think that we've done enough. No, we need to work hard at making sure these are high quality images. Consider maybe getting a 3D render done if your product uh, suits that. Um, or, or getting some models involved in, with your product and getting some lifestyle imagery. And so, you know, really think about how can I create these images to be images that are gonna convert, uh, infographics. You can have text on your sub images, not on your main image, but you can on your sub images. So, um, you know, power statements that really attract people to the benefits of your product. So really work hard to make sure those are as good as they can be because they will aid your conversions in a massive way. But the, the one I wanna talk about um, a, a little bit more just to give you some real in-depth, um, it's not gonna take long, but just to give you a real kind of pro mentality with this is your copy. Your sales copy, copywriting is so important when you are in the sales industry. And when I'm talking about copy, I'm talking about your title, your bullet points, and your description. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to pull through the keywords that we spoke about earlier when we're optimizing for impressions. We wanna pull the keywords into our copy, but at this point, we don't necessarily want to just stuff our listing full of as many keywords as possible, whilst that's partially the truth. What we also wanna do is we wanna create sales copy that is going to convert people from shoppers to customers, okay? We wanna convert them from just perusing our product to actually purchasing our product. And so how do we write copy that converts? I mean, that's a whole uh, you know topic in itself, a massive topic in itself, but I wanna give you a couple of really quick pointers this uh, in this video to really help you with this. You may have heard it spoken about before, but that is not always just talking about the features, but talking about the benefits. Again, excuse my handwriting, but uh, most people, uh, product creators, what they do is they talk about the features of the product, right? We're, we're proud of our product, you know, um, this amazing product has these features and does this. And, and that's great because we're the product creator, we're, we're passionate about that. But most people, the majority of people when they're buying, they're not buying for features, they're buying for benefits. Like what does this yoga mat add to my yoga experience? What do these Bluetooth headphones add to my audio experience? So what does this frying pan add to my cooking experience? They, they may be looking for non-stick uh, non for their frying pan, which is a feature, but really they want to know the benefit. Like what's it going to transform in my cooking environment, right? And so it's this filter which you've got to think through when you're writing your bullet points mainly and also your description. Your five bullet points, you've got to think through this filter every step of the way. I've got one of my students that I'm just training at the moment and working through this aspect of writing copy and it's hard, right? At first it's, you know, having some back and forth and he's sending me some ideas and I'm sending back, all, you know, some additions of what I think could be really good. And, uh, you know, and it's hard at first because we don't always think with this mindset, think in this way, but it's important that we train ourselves to think like this when we're writing our bullet points. You've got five bullet points and you need to make them all 
count, all right? And so here's the pro tip of how you actually do this. A good exercise that you can take your product listing through is you wanna find five features of your, of your product. Find the five features, don't shy away from them. It's not like you can't talk about them, but you have gotta bring out the benefit that that feature brings to that person's life. And how you do that, here's the secret, here's the key, is this, is you use joining words joining words okay you use joining words with your features and your benefits so for instance a yoga mat you know a yoga mat is soft and then we've got to find a joining word that brings us to the benefit uh, joining words can be things like um, allowing uh, that's a great joining word it's uh, you know really just flows in right allowing so this yoga mat is super soft uh, you know it's really we've made it really thick allowing you to have longer yoga sessions without feeling the pain right instantly you've taken something that's a benefit it's nice it's soft cool right? every yoga mat is soft but you've created the emotion in the buyer by saying allowing you to have longer longer yoga sessions. Um, let's take, for instance, um, headphones, right? So uh, wireless headphones. So wireless is the feature, um, but what are we looking for in the benefit? We're, we're thinking it's gonna free us up, right? Okay, so it's gonna free me up, so freeing freeing you up to have, uh, you know, freeing you up to enjoy your gym session uh, without hindrances, you know, something like that. You, you get it, you can come up with something better, I'm sure, given a bit of time and thought. I'm doing this on the fly, right? I haven't prepared these, so it's just, I'm um, just thinking about it, right? Um, so well, here's some other words, what's another word? Like uh, meaning, that's another word. Um, so for instance, you might be selling, uh, you know, a frying pan, for instance. Um, so you wanna say the frying pan is non-stick. Non-stick frying pan, meaning um, you can spend more time uh, cooking and eating and less time cleaning your pans. Oh man, that is a good one. That is not, that was not planned, but that is a good one. That will sell, right? Because people instantly are like, oh yeah, I, don't, I hate cleaning. <laughs> you, you know, you hate, you hate cleaning up, right? You hate doing the washing up. I don't know if there's anyone out there and you enjoy cleaning up and washing up, you need help. Uh, but you, by selling someone that idea that actually you can spend less time cleaning and more time doing the things you love if you buy this product, right? That right there is a benefit and that right there will honestly earn you thousands of pounds more this year if you implement it, all right? So those are the, those are the three things you gotta implement into your product listing to optimize. It's gotta be for impressions. Remember, we wanna get eyeballs on our product, as many as possible, and then we wanna get people clicking through, we wanna get a great click-through rate, and then we wanna get a great conversion rate. Three things, one, impressions, two, clicks, three sales. And how do you do it? By using all of these tools that I'm giving you in this video. Implement what I've taught you in this video and I promise you it's going to cause a growth in your business. And there is an incredibly, incredibly good chance that the odds are weighted in your favor that you are going to make thousands of pounds more in your business this year, all from a free video on YouTube, right? So if you have liked it, please do me the honor of clicking the like button below so that more people can see it and it can help more businesses and uh, more people can be freed up to live the life that they truly desire and make an impact in the world. And do leave a comment below too. Maybe tell me, you know, how terrible my handwriting is or something like that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video and if there's anything else I can help with. And here's the thing, right? You can implement the strategies from this video today and it can make a significant difference in your business. And now what so many people do is they shy away from actually investing in growing in themselves. And, uh, you know, recently I, I looked, I surveyed kind of the, the training that was available to be able to sell on Amazon, to sell online, um, that's available to us today. And I noticed a few things. Number one, I noticed that the quality really, I felt could be higher. And number two, I, I felt like the prices were, were quite expensive for the quality that that was available and so having avoided it for so long because I didn't want to be like one of those guys you know one of those course gurus I avoided it for that reason but then I actually realized that you know what this is the reason I should start it because I am different and what I want to do is bring so much value to the table for an affordable price it still means that people value it because they've invested something into it because ultimately what I've noticed in my life is that those that pay pay attention you know when we invest in something we go to the next level with it and we get passionate and committed to 
it. And so what I did is I actually created a training program called Amazon Masters, aimed at people initially selling in the UK and Europe, but with 95% of the content being applicable to people selling in the US also and other marketplaces. And uh, you know, I created this content really to try and help as many people as possible. And so in this video today, if you implement what you've learned, you could earn thousands of pounds more just in this year alone. And, and it baffles my mind sometimes that people aren't willing to uh, in, invest in themselves and train and become better at what they do so that their business can grow in rev massively in revenue. And so I'd love to invite you, take a look at the Amazon Masters program. There's a link in the description below. Um, look, it's not gonna be for everyone. Some people wanna do it on their own, that's fine. But for a super, super affordable price, you can have um, you know over 100 more videos just like this one. You can have uh, you know my one-to-one -one support for a limited time I'm doing coaching calls, live coaching calls with you, one-to-one -one with you, um, a couple of those free as a bonus in with the course. So um, if that is something that you feel might help you, please do check out the link in the description below. I would love to help you some more. If you have liked the video, please do drop a like. Let me know in the comments below what's helped. And don't forget, if you're someone who wants to build a business that's gonna bring them financial freedom, that's gonna free you up to live the life that you want, to live the life uh, of purpose that you desire, uh, then make sure you do hit my ugly mug uh, and subscribe and uh, turn that notification bell on just to make sure you don't miss any of the videos that are coming out. I've got some great things planned over the next few months and really believe that they're gonna help you build the business of your dreams and build the life of your dreams too. All right, I will see you in the next one.